Hello and welcome to the MechSoft demonstration series, where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real-world applications. For more information about our products, or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mechsoft.com. In this video, we demonstrate 3-axis machining with RhinoCam 2016 during our recent CAM and Education webinar. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. Can you guys see my screen all right? Yes. Great. What I've got here um, is uh, Rhino uh, 5.0 uh, loaded, and I have a part uh, on the screen here. Now, let me, let me close this uh, browser just a second so you can see the whole thing. What we have here is a three a CO2 uh, racer model. Now you you may uh, be familiar with Pitsco. They uh, they manufacture and sell modeling kits with the blanks of wood, and uh, you can machine out your own uh, race car, uh, put your CO2 cartridge in, and you can actually race these. So what we have here we have a racer, and I've got a split plane here uh, right here in the middle of the park because as you can see. There's features on the bottom uh, and on the top. So what we're going to do here in the quick demo is we're going to show you uh, how we machine the top, and then uh, I have another file loaded. I'll show you what it looks like uh, after we have already machined uh, the bottom. Now, RhinoCam uh, is a completely integrated plugin uh, that runs inside of Rhino. So it has the you have the RhinoCam menu here at the top, and there are uh, multiple modules that you can get in RhinoCam. You can get the milling module, a turning module, uh, nested module if you want to nest uh, parts, and also an, an art module if you want to do 3D release from, uh, from images. That, uh, furniture makers do that a lot. So we'll go ahead and load the mill module. And over here on the left, you see uh, the mill module browser. So everything that you need to do to create toolpaths is right here uh, in this browser. And it's divided up into two, actually two sections, the, the machining browser and the machining object browser uh, at the bottom. And basically to create toolpaths, you just work from left to right uh, on the program tab to create your toolpaths. And then you have a simulate tab that you use to simulate. Now down here in the machining object browser, uh, you have a number of tabs here. As you can see, we have a tools tab, and I have a couple, two or three tools already created here. Um, but I'll show you how easy it is to, to create tools. You have a create edit tool dialog, and we support all these different tool types from ball mills to end mills, V cutters, uh, facing mills, fillet mills, and drills and taps and reams and bores. And also here we have a custom defined mill where if you have a a mill that's not standard that you ha have had made, you can uh, define that in RhinoCam simply by using a, a two-dimensional profile and loading it directly into the dialog. And then also over here, you can define your parameters and you can define your properties of your tool, your tool material, tool number, etc. And then you also have uh, feeds and speeds that you can assign uh, to the tool and you can also uh, display a built-in tool calculator that will suggest uh, different feeds and speeds and cut rates based on your material, uh, your stock material and your tool material. So let's go ahead and close that. So I've got uh, three tools already created Then we also have other tabs here. Um, most importantly I want to mention the K-Bases tab. Anything that you create in Rhino any tool path, any tool, um, you only have to do it run once. You can save your tool path to a knowledge base and load that knowledge base whenever you create new parts. And over here on the tools tab, you see uh, opt commands here to uh, load a tool library and save it, save your tools to a library, etc. So you only have to do things once. Now I have a couple of machining operations here. I wanted to go ahead and get rid of those because I'm going to show you how to do those. Now. From the code program tab, it's really easy to create toolpaths. We'll just work from left to right. We'll define our machine, and we're going to use three axis operations for this. Uh, but you, uh, RhinoCamp supports three, four, and five axis uh, machine tools, so we'll go ahead and set that to three axis. And then for the post, 
We have our post uh, default to Haas, but RhinoCam supports over 200 different post processors. Uh, if you, uh, for all the popular controller types, uh, even if your your machine has a controller that's not on our list, as long as it accepts standard G code, uh, we can uh, help you create a post uh, for it. So we'll set the posted file extension to NC, and you can add more extensions to this very easily. We'll pick OK there. Now, for the setup section, uh, RhinoCam, uh, when you load RhinoCam, it comes with one setup by default, and that setup is aligned uh, with the world origin uh, in Rhino. Now, a setup is used to define the uh, coordinate system of your machine tool. So, as you can see here, we can display that on and off, and you see our, our setup here aligned with the world origin. Uh, it aligns it X and Y uh, with our part, and the, the Z depth is the direction that we're going to go to cut. So, we've got one setup already. So we'll move over to the stock, stock section, and you have a number of different stock options. I'll go ahead and define a box stock, and I have some default dimensions already entered in here for our stock for this part, uh, but if you have a part and you don't know what the stock size uh, should be, you can just pick this copy model bounding box and it'll tell you the size of your part, and you can just add some uh, dimensions, uh, length, width, and height to uh, define your stock size. So we'll pick OK there. Also, you're going to want to align your stock uh, to the part. So this allows you, this is your part and this represents your stock. You can move your, your stock in alignment with the z-axis. We'll put it at the bottom of the part. And then we'll align it in the x and y to the center of our part and pick OK. And you can also display the stock, uh, on, turn it on and off on the screen here. So there's our stock created. Now what we're going to do is assign a material to the stock. So we'll select the material option, and we have it set to wood currently, but there's a number of different materials that you can choose from, and you can easily add materials to this list if your material is not in here. So we have that set to wood. So we've completed the machine setup section, the stock section, where we're following to the right, and we'll go ahead and create a work zero. This will be our machine zero point. Uh, you may not want to uh, zero out on this bottom corner, you may want to zero out somewhere out else on the stock, so we'll go ahead and create a work zero, and we'll set it to the stock box. So for the top zero face of the work zero, we'll put it to the highest Z on the stock, and then we'll move it over to the southwest corner of the stock, directly above our world origin in Rhino. So let's go ahead and generate a work zero. So now we've got a work zero there that we're going to use in all coordinates uh, for our tool pass we've measured uh, from that point. So now we have RhinoCamp supports, like I mentioned, two uh, through five axis uh, machining tool paths as well as uh, whole machining operations. Let's just go through these real quick. You, in two axis, you can do roughing, facing, profiling, all the way up to remachining in two axis, and you don't even need a 3D part model. You can just do two axis machining just from uh, two dimensional curves. We also have on our three axis dialog a wide range of uh, three axis operations from roughing operations, uh, finishing operations. Uh, detail operations such as pencil tracing, and we got radial and spiral machining, uh, curve machining, a lot of different uh, three-axis machining operations supported in Rhino. And then if your mill has a four-axis uh, rotary attachment, we have continuous and index four-axis operations here. And then also if your mill is a multi-axis mill, uh, we also support uh, both indexed and continuous five-axis uh, tool paths here. So we're going to go ahead and create uh, a, rough, a three axis roughing operation because we have a lot of material here that we want to get rid of initially before we go into our finishing operation. So we'll go ahead and go to three axis and select horizontal roughing. Now everything you need to do to create your tool paths is all defined within one dialog. It makes it real easy. There's a number of tabs up here and we'll go through each one of them uh, real quick here and show you. Uh, for the control geometry, uh, for horizontal roughing, you don't need to select anything here initially because uh, RhinoCamp will figure out where the stock is and where the part is and it'll calculate your roughing operation for you. So we can skip that tab. Uh, for our tool, we'll go ahead and use our quarter inch uh, end mill to rough it out. Uh, feeds and speeds, 
you can set these here or you can load them from the tool. Uh, for my part here, they're already set to the tool, but you can override those if you want. For the clearance plane, this is where the uh, retract motions and cut transfer motions are going to take place and we can set that to automatic and RhinoCam will automatically determine where that clearance plane is for you and for the cut transfer method we'll just set it uh, to the clearance plane. Now for the cut parameters on the roughing we're going to leave the tolerance to 10 thousandths and we're going to have uh, 25 thousandths of stock left on the part. So when we're done roughing this we're going to leave 25 thousandths uh, away from the part for our uh, finishing uh, operation. We we'll use an offset cut pattern and more importantly we're going to define the step over distance for our tool. For roughing we'll set that to 40 percent and for our cut levels this determines how deep you're going to cut. Now I mentioned that we have a split plane here so we can go ahead and define that as our depth that we want to go down to. We will check the bottom box and then we'll go ahead and pick the split plane. So that determines how deep your cut's going to be. And we also have flat areas on the part. So we want to make sure in our roughing that we go ahead and clear those uh, with the flat end mill. So we'll go ahead and check the clear flats box here. For our engage and retract, we'll just use the default parameters and generate the roughing operation. So turn the toolpath on. So you can see we've got uh, a nice three axis toolpath. Uh, created here and you can also look at the toolpath and levels. Horizontal uh, roughing is a roughing and levels operation and you can look at each level as it works its way down. So let's go ahead and uh, simulate this. So we'll select the operation and pick play. And you can uh, watch the simulation with the tool uh, path displayed or you can turn that off to get a better view uh, of the operation. So there's our roughing operation. It's left uh, 25 thousandths of stock away from the surface. So let's go ahead and create our uh, finishing operation. We'll go ahead and go to three axis. We'll do a parallel finishing. And um, again, you don't have to select anything here, but let's go ahead and, and uh, confine it to the split plane. We'll go ahead and select our split plane. So there's our containment region. And for the tool for finishing, we'll use our ball mill, 3 16 ball mill. Feeds and speeds, we'll make sure they're loaded from the tool. Clearance plane is the same. For the cut parameters, uh, we're going to use a 1,000th uh, tolerance. And for stock, will be zero. We'll be cutting it right down to the part surface. Uh, in your uh, parts, you can leave stock and come back with another operation uh, to make excessively finer uh, finishing cuts if you wish to. We'll use a mixed cut direction and for the angle of cuts here we want to cut crosswise across the part so we'll leave that set to zero for our angle of cuts and we'll go ahead and uh, set our step over distance for finishing. Let's set this to 15 percent of a smaller step over for finishing. Z containment, we don't need any containment here because we're going to cut right down to our split plane. Entry exit, we can use the default parameters here and here as well. So it's going to generate that. So there's our nice uh, parallel finishing operation. Uh, there's our 15% step over uh, of the tool. And let's go ahead and run a uh, simulation of this. So there's our parallel finishing operation being simulated. And if you don't want to wait uh, for the entire simulation, you can always pause it uh, and go to, our, go to the end. And there's our uh, parallel finishing operation. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you is once you have toolpaths created, uh, you may want to get information about the toolpaths. Uh, you can just right click on any toolpath or the entire setup and pick information and you can get uh, information about your setup for each operation. You can get the estimated machining time, the number of go-to motions, here's your tool listed. And uh, for our operations here, it's about an hour and 13 minutes of uh, machining time if we run the operations back to back. And then uh, also uh, you can generate uh, what's called a setup sheet. 
Uh, and this is a uh, just a shop document, an HTML document that you can display and print out of your setup. So let's go ahead and uh, right click on the setup, pick shop documentation, and we'll go ahead and uh, pick save, save that, and it's going to generate a document and it's displayed on the screen here. Now this is a um, an HTML document that has your, your stock dimensions up here, it has the picture of your part, it has your tool list, and it has each of your uh, operations listed, and there's other templates you can use uh, to uh, provide even more detailed information uh, about the setup. And your students can use this to uh, print out and submit uh, to you with uh, their projects. Now, also, obviously you're going to want to post this out. So let's go ahead and you can post any one of the operations or again you can select the entire setup and we'll right click and pick post. And here is our posted G-code file. Uh, we have our setup, our work zero defined, our horizontal roughing, and here is all of our uh, go-to motions for the Haas controller uh, to machine both the roughing and the uh, parallel finishing uh, operation. And you can just uh, output this file uh, on a thumb drive and carry it to your uh, machine and run the program from there. Or if your computer is directly connected to your machine, you can just send the file to it directly. Now that's basically it for the first half. Now I wanted to go ahead and I've got the second half loaded in another session here at Rhino. So here's the, uh, the same part and here's our first setup and here's our second setup for the bottom. Let's go ahead and do a quick simulation uh, of the first setup and we'll just pick the setup and pick play and it'll run go through that real quick. There's our parallel finishing operation and uh, I also added a two and a half axis profiling operation on this particular version of the part. And on setup two, this is our bottom, so we'll just do a, a rotate up a little bit and go ahead and simulate side two. And so there's our, our roughing. Uh, gone through kind of quick. We had a parallel finishing and then also a horizontal finishing. I'll show you that. Uh, there's our parallel finishing. There's our horizontal finishing to clean up these sides. And then I uh, also added a, a two and a half axis profiling uh, to clean that up on the sides. So that's basically it. Real easy to create tool paths in RhinoCam. We've done a lot of work on the interface that makes it real easy to use, especially for new students or uh, uh, young adults who have not experienced CAM uh, for the first time.